I was gonna cast this game with uh ah, fuck, I actually didn't record. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll start from the beginning again. <laughs> Fuck. Alright, uh never mind, I'll start from the beginning again. So, to start off, this is the first group. Uh we have uh today we are gonna have Genghis Khan versus Alfred the Alpaca. And uh uh this is gonna be the first best of series. So we're gonna I'm just calling gonna call this group one. Because there was no name for the group in the in the Discord, so I just thought, okay, you know what? Since it's the first match that goes, let's call this group one. So, uh, for this for this group, we're gonna have uh, Genghis Khan versus Alfred the Alpaca first, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be an, it's gonna be an interesting match. I am gonna load up the game now, and unfortunately, I was actually trying to get Capture H to work, but her Capture H hasn't been cooperating very well with me. So unfortunately, I will not be able to use Capture H for the cast. But you know what? I don't think it really matters that much because we are going to have some very interesting games, ladies and gentlemen. This is Age of Empires 2. My name is Gamer is DC, and welcome to the first best of three series of the NNL Hidden Cup. Sorry, guys. <laughs> don't worry. We this is this is my first tournament. Give me a break. And rules weren't properly stated. So uh, we're going to have uh, Genghis Khan in the blue. Playing as the Lithuanians on Arabia, and we're gonna have uh, Alfred the Alpaca playing in the red as the uh, Portuguese. So, sorry guys, uh, kind of messed up there. But uh, looks like Dia's actually gonna spawn quite far for Genghis Khan, and some part of me told me that he's Mongols. Uh, if I would see stuff perfected to death or a subscription to Netflix, yeah. Uh, wait, what the hell? Why isn't he not showing? Anyway. Uh, we have a very forward goal by Genghis Khan. Very close forward berries. One ball over here. Well, it's the elephant. And uh, where's the other? Uh, the other elephants behind. Actually, both elephants. Is that is that normal for European Rumble Arabia? Yeah. So there's two there's two elephants over here, and uh, there's a back berry for Alfred the Alpaca. And uh, is it normal to have different different hunt spawn? I don't know, but. Seems to me like Genghis Khan is going for a very standard 6-2 And if we look at player 2, which for some reason my hotkeys aren't working There we go If we look at player 2, he's uh, also going for uh, Alfred, he's also going for 6-2 So, so far not really much difference Even though Genghis is playing the Lithuanians I was kind of hoping for a, a Lithuanian Drush, but uh, whatever <laughs> It's fine, it's fine We are gonna see uh, Veil going for it to take the hunt so this is Portuguese actually. Alfred's going for Portuguese. So this looks almost like a this looks almost like a scout built by Portuguese, which is very very unorthodox. And I'm not sure whether that's the intent, but he is sending one more veil to Lumber. So yeah, it's seven four right now. So I think uh, I don't know where this veil. It's just he just, he just wandered off. Whereas for Genghis Khan, uh, he just got the oh he's got a veil kill. Oh no. That is that is not a good sign. The, the, the veil corpse just casually wait. Was the elephant killed by the TC? <laughs> oh shit! The elephant was killed by the TC and he lost the veil. Oh, this is a disaster for Genghis Khan. But the good thing is, uh, uh, Genghis hasn't been idling his TC. So I don't know why he's researching Loom here, but oh, the ultimate disaster for Genghis Khan. He lost both of his balls to the TC. What? Oh, this is amazing. And it uh, looks like uh, Alfred is actually luring his uh, elephant in, but like the elephant's gonna die very soon. Oh my god, he's not watching the bill. He's not watching the bill. Quick, quick. No, you're de aggroing him. Quick, shoot him down. Shoot him down. Oh no. Okay, the bill. The bill survives, and uh, Alfred has a bill lead. But uh, considering that uh, <laughs> considering that Genghis just lost both boss to the to the TC, oh my god, he's gonna be so behind in food. All right, <laughs> Genghis Khan has never been put in a situation where he has uh, been playing in a tournament, so he's uh, uh, panicking panicking really hard in this moment. But you know he's Lithuanian, so he he is gonna have 150 foot. He's gonna have 150 foot a hit, but oh my god. Four on berries, yeah, yeah. So this is pretty standard, I would say. If like you're, if like you have a really bad start, uh, just laying down some farms is really good. Uh, scouting your opponent is nice, although he's kind of, I think he, I think he tanked a bit of TC fire, and uh, Alpha the Alpaca scout. I think he's still trying to look for the sheep, but not really having any luck there. Let's look at the fog of war, and he's getting house. Poor Alfred. All right, 
So he actually missed the sheep, which is right here. Oh, that sucks. And actually, Genghis didn't scout the sheep either. So like, Alfred, Alfred might think that he got lamed actually. But we're gonna see seven on berries, which is a little unorthodox. But you know, uh, when you think you got lame, oh no, he found his sheep. Okay, well six on berries is is perfectly okay. And we have actually nine on berries on the blue. <laughs> We have nine, on, nine on berries for Genghis Khan. So I think it's pretty obvious that this isn't a very high elo game, considering the way both players started and the way both players are going. But at least Alfred is a, uh, see, he's a few villagers ahead. Well, actually, he's what? Evenville? Did he idle his TC? Oh no, he's clicked up to field though. Okay, so. But uh, well, not the not the best timing. But uh, we we do see uh some veils running forward. Uh, this veil should actually be sent to chop the trees near the TC. I don't know what what he's doing. Oh, I think he's trying to look for the deer. I don't know. I, I I really don't know what's going on. Like both these players are not really playing very efficiently right now. Oh, we have a deer push from uh Genghis into the TC with no villagers under the TC. Man, this is such a weird play. <laughs> it is such a weird play. Like this looks like some weird like 1100, 1200 kind of play right now. And like both of these players are just titanicking their way, their way to victory. But oh my god. Uh, what, what, what a game we are watching right now. What a game. Uh, both players adding Dark Age farms actually. So I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see what will happen next because uh, Red is actually two views behind. And he does have lesser farms, but in the long term, he's going to have more more efficient resources to work with. But considering these two, the way these two players are playing, I'm not sure whether I'm not sure whether this is the the, the best thing uh, that's going on right now. But uh, barracks being dropped down forward, and uh, yeah, uh, barracks being dropped down by the blue player as well. So yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see quite a bit of uh, a problem being put up here. But yeah, um, red's not wall, blue's not wall either. Yeah, this looks like I have no idea how this game's gonna go. This this game is pretty interesting as a uh, game goes. So there's gonna be a house being put down for the Lithuanian player. Portuguese is up first, so like. This is Portuguese is up first, which is highly unusual. I would think as the Lithuanian player, I would be okay. Maybe the Portuguese went scouts, I think. But like, if you look at the timing of the feudal, like, I don't know. I, I feel like both of these players are just making it up as they go along. And we actually have militia coming in from the Lithuanian player. What is going on here? What? I was much further behind against the hard AISA, but I still fumbled my way to win. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good for our dancer. But yeah, we have a double archery range from the Portuguese player. Now I'm really interested in seeing how this game goes because we have a double double range archer build going up, and actually he's building a spear in anticipation for Lithuanian scouts. So this is as unorthodox as unorthodox goes. Man, this deal on the goat on the very far end is just oh, it hurts to see. It really hurts to see. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I really don't know what's going on, honestly. Because like both of these players are as, in as inefficient as inefficiency goes. But uh, at least Red, Red has a double blacksmith and a double archery range, but only one blacksmith. Okay, so the 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 the, the, the militia are coming forward. Oh, he did kill a scout. Okay, so that's that's not bad. We're gonna have three lumber camps by the. The Portuguese player and uh, his house, very, 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 very housed. But yeah, looks like uh, looks like militia are being are being thrown forward here. I'm gonna do some squats while, while watching this militia micro. But yeah, archers archers should win militia very easily. So scums are actually coming out from the Lithuanian player, and actually Lithuanian is okay. But uh, as a Lithuanian, you see that your enemy went double range. Uh, what do you do in this situation? You actually add a second range and you go... Oh, you add stable still. What? Hmm. Interesting. So in this situation, when you see that your enemy has gone double range, you actually want to go for... Uh, yeah, actually, I actually fucked up. It's, I want to say double range, but I said double blacksmith. But yeah, 
Um, in this situation, when you see your enemy has gone uh, double range, you would either go... I mean, scouts with skirms could work. But it's not as effective. Especially since like you consider the, uh, the way your eco has been set up. I mean, you do have a lot of farms, so... I guess having food eco is good. Well, the placement of the farms could be improved for the blue player, but he does have a lot of food going. But once these archers are in, they're they are gonna do a hell of damage. They're already at fletching, and uh, they're gonna wreak some havoc and cause a lot of idle time over here. Nine wheels off, and we'll see whether that actually that actually does any significant damage. Skirms are in though for the Lithuanian player, and he's gonna try and hold back the attack. Hmm, three spears. Yeah, this, this seems like a bit too much. I think one spear is okay. I think one spear is okay as a kind of precautionary measure and then you start adding spears the moment you see more more scouts but I think so far Red's doing a decent job he's not really he's idling his eco though so it, it does feel like it does feel like we're not watching the, the, the best executed archer rush here but okay we're gonna have some veils poked over here which is not too bad and we have a veil fight over here which is not gonna be very great a lion Simba is gonna join the lion's gonna join the fight Against the blue, uh, for against the red, but yeah, uh, you cause a bit of idle time here, which is not bad. I think at this point, what you do as red is, you try and set up your eco to go up to Castle Edge and go knights. Like that's what I would do here. Building the two stables before you set up your eco for knights, that is certainly interesting. And now you see, now you see the skirms doing quite a bit of damage because uh, yeah, these are Lithuanian skirms and they do have flashing. And actually, in equal numbers, skirms with fletching can actually do quite a decent number against archers. Although the standard one is to go archer armor. So we're gonna see that these uh, these uh, archers are gonna Oh, this is a terrible, terrible game so far for for Blue. He's gotten so much idle time. It's Red Archer Rush, even though not really, not really having eco set up. He's actually doing quite a bit of number. But the good thing is Blue's not idling his TC. So despite this veil eco time, he's gotten a decent veil lead. But like I said, the eco isn't really ahead at the moment. So even though he is causing quite a bit of idle time, uh, he isn't really doing much to really put himself ahead so yeah you really want to keep making veils when you're exerting pressure so yeah man this is a really big feudal army five skirms two archers and the scouts yeah this looks like a really big army co uh, commitment from red like red wants to stay in feudal at this point but red doesn't really have the eco setup for 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 this and we're actually gonna see a marketplace being dropped down by red which i think it's fine you have like 1000 gold because you haven't been continuously making archers and blue actually trying to trying to save up to go up to castle but what do you do when you're in castle when you see this much this much stuff house being dropped in a very interesting position i'll actually put a house here or something i think that will i think that will make this a bit a bit better a bit better to go yeah, but these, these poor villagers are... They are like I said, this house is a very weirdly built house. So I don't know I don't know what he intends to do with this, but... I mean, we do we still have quite a number of skirms here, but... Not sure whether this will be good. I mean, in good micro, the scout is probably going to mess up with this combination really well. So yeah, I think, I think Blue stands a chance here to clear up this mess in his base. Yeah, these, these guys are all gonna go down. Unfortunately. Man, poor Red. But he did try his best. Alright, so we've got a little bit of inefficiency here, but... I mean, Blue did just clear a problem in his base. And he is... He did lose quite a few veils, but... Hey, at least... At least he went up to castle first. Alright, let's check the market. Oh, it's not this one. Oh, it's... What? Can I not see the market from here? Oh, I can't see the market from here. 
That sucks. Can I really not see the market from this? I thought I would be able to see it. Ah, oh, well. So, we have bloodlines coming in. For some reason, like, the, the thing disappeared. Ah, there we go. Uh, so we do have Castle Age first for the Lithuanian player. Genghis Khan is gonna get some knights out. Uh, not really having much upgrades. He does have 1-1 one, one on his skirms. And the archers from the Portuguese player from Alfred doesn't really have any armor at the moment. So, we'll see. The scouts here are getting, are clearing out this. So, now Alfred is gonna make 3 stable knights. What am I watching? So... Red one knight is gonna clear up this and he's gonna try and reset up his ankle. But what the hell is going on here? Now we have three stable knights and a siege workshop being dropped. And, he, and the fact that he had double double archery range. You know, the sheer size of this army is actually going to kill blue. Blue's blue's forward army. And these guys actually don't stand a chance. They are all, all these armies gonna wipe get wiped out by the three knights. And you still have three more knights in queue. Uh with plus one armor. Oh uh, this is not looking good. Yeah, this is the Arabia game. Yeah, this is the Arabia game. Yeah, like I like I said, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't familiar with what was the format. So game one was supposed to be Arabia, and game two was game two and game two were supposed to be maps of uh, the the player's choice. So I was, I kind of forgot about that because, like I said, this tournament was supposed to have happened a long time ago. So I totally forgot what was the format for the tournament. So yeah, uh, we do have, what, six knights coming out from the Portuguese G's and crossbow getting researched. Now this is very interesting. If we look at Red's eco, Red's eco is not that great, but uh, Red is getting up resources and he's got less idle time than his friend in the blue here. He's dropping down a TC, but man, so many knights from Alfred, Alfred the Alpaca and one spear is gonna do quite a bit of damage to that knight with his very low health, but it's not really gonna do much. The Portuguese player is probably looking quite happy right now because uh, the Portuguese has so much stuff in in, in the in Lithuanian base and taking him of gold. Is there any other gold that the blue can take? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it. Looks like this was his only gold that was really safe to take. There's one gold over here, one gold over here. If you look at this map, there's one gold over here and one gold over here. So you only have two patches of gold and Red basically denied him of all the gold on this side. So what Red can really do right now is just create a whole bunch of crossbows and park his crossbows around here to keep him off the gold while he does damage with the knights. Hello Bluegill! This is a NL hidden card match between Alfred the Alpaca and Genghis Khan. So yeah, we're gonna see like a couple of spearmen being killed right here. Yeah, poor spearmen. Yeah, all these spearmen are gonna get killed. Unfortunately. So yeah. Uh guess what my KD in TJs just now was? Oh sure, let us know. Right, uh blue has stopped production completely. I have no idea what blue does in this situation actually. If once these once these Portuguese knights get plus two, it's basically game over for, for the blue player because like there's so many knights. There's so many knights in in in, in, in raids. Wait what? He put a defensive siege workshop. Then he put an aggressive siege workshop. Well, I mean, his aggressive choice is certainly interesting. He does have a veil lead as well, so... I would say this game is pretty close. <laughs> 1 is to 3, 45 is to 2, against 1600s. Malay good up time, quick walk of veil in, save it, was dodging all shots. Got castle each time with Malay and instant ballistics, very nice. So Blue's gonna re-garrison his, his veils. Oh my god, this is actually looking quite bad for Genghis Khan. Not doing very well on this Arabia game. And he's actually not been able to produce any views and make any 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 military. It's just that the sheer amount of military by Alfred the Alpaca is just destroying Genghis Khan. Look at this. Like the wood line is over chopped here and he actually can't get get can't get a house to wall off. These all these all these knights are gonna eat all these villagers. And he actually forced to make a house here. Like 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 Genghis is basically dead here, isn't he? Well he is taking back gold, but I don't really see a situ a situation in which Blue can come back here, although he is tanking the TC with the, the knights, but honestly once Genghis Khan researches plus 2, he's, his army is good to go. He's adding rams as well, so he's gonna break down this TC very shortly, but the knights are tanking TC fire. I don't know why he's making skirms, but 
Uh, this is the LNL hidden cup. Uh, this is currently uh, this is currently uh, Alfred the Alpaca versus Genghis Khan, and uh, we can see that uh, Genghis Khan had been put on a very far defensive defensive attack for the entire game. So yeah, the view lead is almost twice twice the amount right now, and actually cavalry are just coming in from the Portuguese. What? What? Wow, that's actually very interesting. Well, Ram is coming in, and it kind of bothers me that Alpha the Alpaca isn't researching plus two, even though he has the rest for it. And actually, going cavalry archers on Lithuanians, very not Lithuanians, Portuguese is actually very interesting. GGWP, you keep me off of gold. Yeah, I felt like once all this gold was taken, he he didn't really have the answer. He did have this bad gold, but yeah, I think this is the it. GG to Alpha the Alpaca. This is is this AI casting? <laughs> The crossbow movement says no. Yeah, so Alfred the Alpaca takes game one of this miraculous series. And actually this is uh this has actually been a really interesting match to go. I thought like with the way this game goes, but yeah, you can see that at uh like I, I would say this ELO is about eleven hundred to twelve hundred. Oh you got confused because of the names, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's because it's an AI game. You I, I guess it's because this is an AI game, so yeah. It was uh it was pretty it was pretty confusing at first but yeah very very interesting match from both of these players uh i would say that i am very intrigued with the way these two players play so i i would guess that the elo is probably about 1200 to 1200 considering that blue murdered both of his elephants with his tc and then uh red had a bunch of idle time and his building choice was very weird okay so hit, hit me with this right he went two range and then a blacksmith, which I thought was quite normal. But then he went two stables, made two scouts. <laughs> he went two stables, he made two scouts. Uh, all that feudal army was cleaned up. But then he added a third stable, and then he started making knights. Until he made like nine knights. Okay, and he only got plus one armor on these guys. And he got plus two armor, a uh, plus two attack. The pot king arrow on the crossbowman. And he didn't make any crossbowman. And he started making cavalry archers. And he had a siege workshop. So like, we have like the most mixed army composition from Alfred the Alpaca and I have no idea what what was happening in that game. But GG's to both players. Alfred the Alpaca takes game one. So yeah even though I did confuse the match earlier. Even though I did confuse the match earlier, I'm gonna leave that in the in the recording. So that uh yeah I'm uh for people who miss the stream shenanigans uh I'm gonna upload the whole mess on YouTube just so that people can understand how freaking messy that was. So now we're going to move on to the Mangrove Arena game which was the actual game 2 of uh, this series. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Gamer is DC. This is a uh, Mangrove Arena game and like I said, uh, this, this, this is a very interesting map because um, yeah, the spawn is very interesting. So he finds the tree, the tree water buffalo, right? And then he has the deer. But then as you see on the red side, right? Oh wait, no, no, no. He just didn't find the, the tree buffalo straight away. Oh no, he actually went outside and he scouted. And he brought in two extra. What? <laughs> that is certainly interesting. I thought you are crazy already and now it's shenanigans. Yeah, it's pretty much it, Blue Bill. It's pretty much it. So we saw that Alpha the Alpaca took a very convincing game one. So let's see whether Alpha the Alpaca will, will bring in a uh, game 2 of this series. Genghis Khan of course, playing as the Vietnamese and Alpha the Alpaca playing as the Malay. Like I said, uh, I kind of I kind of got confused so it was supposed to be game 1 on Arabia. <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry guys, I totally forgot the for the freaking uh, the freaking format for this for this uh, NL Hidden Cup. But like I said, I, I thought it was weird for both players to put their lumber camp near the outer forest. So what I would do in this situation, right? I would actually build my first lumber camp on the like, cause I don't know the fog of war. If I'm playing this match from the first time, I'll think, okay, like, tune into my mega random brain. I'll like, okay, I'll build, I'll build on one of, I'll build like the four initial or three initial wood cutters on one. I mean, it's it's kind of like a hideout map, so you kind of want to macro a bit. So I'll kind of put like four lumber, four lumber lumber camp workers on one of these small trees. And then after I take my two ball, which I know they are two ball, I would move on to the jungle uh, on the edge. Okay, but since this is kind of like a, a, a hideout plus, 
mangrove jungle game. Uh, it, it, the opening can be very interesting. You could even do like, you could even potentially do like a, a, a drop dock outside, because like like there's 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 deep fish outside. You can potentially go for deep fish, and there's actually deep fish inside the, inside this. So it's actually very interesting the way this map has been laid out. I'm very curious as to know what's gonna happen for this game because, uh, we already have some idle time from Genghis Khan. I think Genghis Khan is a little bit thrown off, but. He does have wheels ahead of uh, his friend, but yeah, Malay versus Vietnamese. I actually didn't really have a chance to talk about the 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 Sif matchups earlier, but uh, actually, uh, like in the earlier game, I mean, like this is pretty low. Like this is like like eleven xx, twelve xx. So I don't think Sif matchup really matters that much uh, below thirteen hundred. Like Sif bonuses are nice, but we're gonna see like. A bit of a, a bit of a squabbling here, and uh, Alfred is actually gonna maybe lose his scout here. Uh, he's trying to kill the, he's trying to kill the water buffalo, but I don't think it's really gonna help you. I think Alfred's gonna lose his early scout, which is a little bit unfortunate. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. He's he's gonna bring one of the buffalo back. I don't think it's not. How many relics are on this map? There are uh, one relic. There's one relic, two relic, three relic. There's four relic. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but uh, Alpha does lose his scout. Uh, one relic, two relic. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, by the way, because <laughs> the map is a bit hard. So there's four relics here, and then there's a fifth relic here. So one relic here, two relics closer to the side of blue, and two clerics closer to the side of red. So I would say the relic distribution is pretty even. Uh, Dog being dropped down by the Malay player, which is a very, 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 very good strat. Four on wood though, I would actually put more on wood. And like I said, I wouldn't put the wheels all the way out here. I'll actually put the wheels like on the closer wood patch. But he is getting his ball, so is blue. Yeah, I think Genghis Khan is in a bit of a fix here. Uh, losing game one can be a little bit demoralizing, but we're gonna have a little bit of housing here from Genghis Khan. Yeah, both players getting a dog down and laying down some fishing ships. But uh, blue's gonna be a bit hit ahead and red's gonna have a little bit of a idle time with eco. But okay, I guess like with the deep fish coming in, I think the eco so far looking better for Genghis Khan over Alfred. And uh, just building, just having more veils on wood is gonna really help uh, fishing ship production. Yeah, he's gonna have like six. Uh, you you actually really want like seven or eight, eight veils on wood here. But yeah, uh, water buffalo taken, being taken, and the uh, second ball has already been taken. So actually, it's it's looking quite nice. Uh. We're gonna have a house built here, so interesting. I guess he's gonna build a mining camp later, but I don't think you really need to build a mining camp so early. I wonder if you can actually do a water war in this one. What is the white dots in the green mess? I have no idea. It's apparently uh, crocodiles. I have no idea why the crocodiles are there, to be honest. This is a very interesting map. I guess if you if you dig your, your trees deep enough, you're gonna find these crocodiles. I have no idea what the crocodiles in this map are for, but we're gonna see a lot of idling from the Vietnamese player. I have no idea why. I, I feel like you should just keep making veils, even if you don't have the feudal. And like keep your dog active. You actually really want to keep your dog active. I mean there's not really that much deep fish, but like you should have at least like five or six fishing ships before you really compensate the use of the dog. Because you're you're basically investing uh well how many how many how much wood is that actually? Uh, dock is about 175, and then you add the cost of the fishing ships, which is about 75 or 85. Uh, I, I really should know this stuff. I'm really sorry. I forgot. <laughs> 75 wood. So that's about, so six fishing ships is about 450 wood. Then you add the dock. So it's about 625 wood, but you get a really high, high radiage from the fish, from the deep fish. But Alfred's going to be up first. So... What's Alfred gonna do? He's gonna start making fire ships. So we're gonna see a bit of water war coming up. Uh, Alfred actually should. Uh, oh yeah, Alfred. Alfred is supposed to go up earlier because Alfred is playing Malay. But whoa, Genghis Khan with uh, quite a bit of a veil lead. Uh, it's from the fishing ships, I think. Yeah, but he doesn't have a lot of wood right now. He actually needs way more wood. Like keep keep making veils, my friend. Keep making veils. You don't wanna stop making veils. Because Malays advance to uh, advance their age faster than other generic sieves. So yeah, see ya. See ya blue. Thanks for thanks for dropping by. But hello Belle, it's good to see you here. 
Yeah, Malay, Malay, Malay advantage is that their save time is up, so they actually can be like three veils ahead of their opponent. It's like a hidden Viking bonus. It's almost very similar to the Viking bonus that you have like three more veils, except that you actually have to invest that that resources, those resources. But with fishing ships, and then you combine it with fire ships. So, so blue does know that that red is going for fire ships now. So. Uh, we, do, we do have a demo ship coming up for, for Blue, and Blue actually has an uh, equal number of docks. So two, two, two demo ships actually could clear up any fire ship mass. But this could also be a gigantic jabit. But yeah, the, the demo ship is coming out, and Red does see the demo ship. But only one, one demo ship, it's not going to be enough. And it's only one fire galley as well, so actually that's a pretty big waste of resources. Yeah, two demo ships is way more expensive than one fire ship. A two demo ships will kill, but if okay, so it's like the amount of resources you invest in fire ships is proportional to the amount of uh, value you get out of it. So, for example, uh, in this situation, uh, if your enemy has built three fire ships, having two demo ships land a good strike. You could potentially kill two fire ships. You could actually do any damage from two to three fire ships worth of damage with the demo ship. However, if you had only one demo ship, I mean one fire ship and use two demo ships on it, you basically got less value of your demo ships. So the value of your demo ship is proportional to the amount of resources your enemies invested in docks. And you can see that the melee actually is investing a lot of resources into the dock now. I actually feel in this situation, the melee actually should transition to galleys and fight off the potential demo ship because he's only seen demo ships so far. He is building some demo ships, but he is idling his TC and you can see that uh, despite idling his TC, uh, actually red, red and blue have been idling their TCs quite a lot actually. <laughs> this is this is as deep as the deep the game goes. Uh, this map is a uh, mangrove swamp. Uh, sorry, mangrove arena, European rumble mangrove arena. So this is basically like a combination of hideout and mangrove jungle. But yeah, we see another fire ship coming out, and we see the demo ship. So now you see like there are two fire ships, right? If the demo ship explodes and it damages both of these fire ships, it potentially does more damage. But yeah, it doesn't really do any damage here because it got blown up before that. But a bit of the splash damage does catch off and it does take off about half health of each of these guys. And both players are uh, starting to invest in water. However, Genghis Khan is actually sneaking in some scouts. And scouts aren't a good counter for fire ships. But if he made an uh, opening into the base of raid, he could actually send the scouts through the opening and potentially do quite a lot of damage. He is building more demo ships. So at this point, I would actually like stop using the demo ships on the fire ships and actually use the demo ships on the walls, so I can start like putting in the scouts that I that I put in to try and grab. I'm actually very surprised in this situation because like the Vietnamese bonus doesn't require wood, so fighting water is really good here. But Malay fishing ships basically says, okay, I'm gonna build a whole bunch of fishing ships and then later on I will go on to cast switch and I'll get what. Uh, quite a bit of value out of it, but these are these are pretty good scouts, you know, fast scouts. Okay, over here, four scouts can beat two fire ships if put in the right situation. But the scouts are trying to go for the wall, not really going up for the wall. They're not really doing much here. Less combo maps and less back for the map. But yeah, uh, Red actually has less army at the moment. He doesn't really have the rest to make the army. Like I said, Red has a lot of food. Okay, he has a lot of food. He is Malay. So actually, uh, red, red losing water here could not be too bad because he's going to go up to Castle Age very soon. He just needs two of the buildings to go up. Oh no, he has a blacksmith and a market. So actually, Alfred and Alpaca can actually queue up now. You can click up. You can click up. Like, you're idling your TC and we just click up. You have a blacksmith and a marketplace. <laughs> this feels like the 900 game I played. But to be fair, this is a hell lot more advanced because uh, we have like a couple of aggression. We have a couple of mixed builds and the barracks is being built from the from the uh, Malay player. Actually Blue's eco looks quite good, but he should he should refresh his number camps. His lumber camp honestly. Because these views aren't really getting that much value out of it. And uh, even though his army does look pretty solid. Ooh demo ship! Good blow. Taking down quite a bit of health. And actually Red is I think the hell Ooh! Wow that was a perfect demo ship blow it kills two scouts. Now that is value. And Red actually going for many arms after seeing Fire ships and demo ships being used. What? This is interesting to say the least. But uh, yeah, the cast, the the the, the fire ships are gonna hit the dock, the gold, the gold veils here, and another dock going down. Not sure whether you really want that. The demo ship was kind of wasted. No, no, no. Stop wasting your demo ship on the docks. You don't want to do that. Oh my god. You need to hold back your demo ships. So many on wood, don't you think? Yeah. I feel like he he kind of put. I mean, if you want to go like full navy, I think like. 
having this much of wood is okay, I suppose. Like this, these players are as low rated as low rated can get. But like he has a decent amount of resources. I really feel like building up a castle would be really good here. And just being able to go up to castle and drop your opponent. But like this feudal pressure isn't really doing much, honestly. Like red's gonna go up, red's gonna have red's gonna have castle edge. And like there are a few scouts around, so like I mean red can technically make like spears to counter the scouts, because he sees the scouts right now. But the scouts aren't really hitting equal at the moment. In fact, Red's actually walling up. Red's going all up to Castle Age. So we do have Galley on the way. Interesting choice. He does have three he does have four dogs at the moment. So actually going Galley might not be a bad idea here. Having a Castle Age uh upgrade on your opponent will make this a big difference. But the scout here managing to kill one one uh managing to get one build to garrison and actually a hell of a lot more Scouts coming in from the blue player. A spear is coming out, but I'm not sure whether this spear is gonna be very useful. This spear is gonna just take 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 the damage from the from the scout. Take the damage, but he's gonna get his under build inside the TC. And my god, what a what a game this has been so far. And the uh, flowering dance is gonna gonna uh is gonna just uh, make some spears. Uh, sorry, uh, not flowering dance. Flowering dance is gonna draw over red dance, but uh, the spears are coming out, so no more spear aggression. Fire ship is out for oh yeah he's researching the war galley upgrade because it upgrades all your ships so fire galleys upgrade to fire ships and uh a galleon get upgraded as well but he is not microing this so he's gonna have a navy advantage at the moment although I'm not sure how well this is gonna play out I really feel like the Malay player needs to add like some galleons because he keeps seeing these demo ships these aren't the most useful demo ships but. The two demo ships can very easily wipe out all these fire ships. Boom! Boom! Oh, one health. But yeah, the 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 the, the ships are gonna cover in hell, and we're gonna see the the spears going around the side and hitting him. And we're actually gonna see bloodlines being researched by Vietnamese. Are we gonna see Vietnamese elephants? The eco is the eco is looking pretty solid here. Although the there is a little bit of overchop here. Oh no! What's he building? Oh no! These these wheels are gonna get caught up by the spears. The wheels here need to be micro against the spears, that's probably the best idea right now. But the demo ship is gonna come in, might make a bada boom here in the meantime. But actually, Gang uh Genghis Khan doing quite a bit of decent micro against the spears and killing all the spears. Yeah, we see that there's a 50 wheel lead right now from Genghis Khan. But uh Red might catch up very soon if he drops a TC. Wood here being refreshed, so it's not too bad. I would say Red has a better grasp of eco control. Like look at how far wheels have to walk to build that lumber camp. Lumber camp is built here already. But I'm not sure if you really want to have such an exposed lumber camp. I would rather just like take the lumber behind. Like that would be a better idea. Like the view management in this game has been very questionable <laughs> at best. But yeah, you want 5v1 extreme AI? Nice. Very good job. Very good job, Mali. So yeah, uh blue does have a uh, fire galley in, but it's gonna get taken out by these fire fire ships. But I like like what can blue really do here? Because red red has control over the the landscape. All 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 red needs to do is add TCs, boom up, and come with a gigantic Malay army. Like that's probably the play here right now. Uh, yeah, get the galley upgrade is coming up. I think that's what it's called, right? War galley. Yeah, there we go. The war galley upgrade is getting up. So what is war galley gonna do here? I would actually like transition into like a more land army. Cause if Vietnamese go for elephants, it could totally work here. Vietnamese elephants are actually better than Malay elephants in this game. Uh, in this particular scenario. But Red. How many of the fire ship? He's gonna spot out the villagers and uh he's actually gonna fight the fire ship and do like one damage per villager. Actually three damage and he doesn't have any melee armor. So the fire ship is actually gonna get taken down by the villagers, but he does kill one build before he eventually goes down. But the dog goes down from the fire ship and the war galley is gonna get poked to death by villagers and we're gonna see a demo ship coming out yeah this demo ship will potentially kill all the navy here that's not being micro and wait for it wait for it wait for it kaboom oh wait kaboom there we go two fire galleys down from the red player so every little every little exchange that he makes with uh the demo ship is gonna give him a bit of value and he has a lot of demo ships right now well on the way but yeah this is gonna be very interesting very, very good Jim. uh this is uh this is a mangrove swamp. Sorry, this is mangrove arena, which is basically mangrove swamp plus uh, uh, hideout. But yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of army here from the red player. A lot of navy here from the red player. 
I don't know, what does Blue do in this situation? I feel like Blue needs to get up a castle, but he doesn't have any bills on stone. Like, if Blue gets up a castle, like, he's been buying a lot of time, but Red basically has, like, free equal at the back. I'm very surprised that Red isn't adding any TC, because he could totally add TC right now, and just go all in on the on, on the eco, because he has a significant veil lead of 5, <laughs> because he's been idling his TC this whole time, and a lot of military has been idled as well, so... Alfred is like, I, I can't really play, you know, I, I have hooves, I can't really move the mouse, I can't really press the buttons, it's really very hard to, 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 to play this game. And actually a big navy fight going up here, the demo ship is gonna get a 6 fire galley total of casualty from the red, and Blue's actually gonna win this fight. Holy shit, those two demo ships probably just wrecked everything that the, that the red navy has, but red... Going forward with the most ballsy castle. This is a get out of my game castle. As he sends forward more demo ships and more fire ships. And this demo ship is gonna go BOOM! And all the navy so far is going gone. Blue does have more demo ships on the way. And kaboom! Another another casualty. But yeah, Red really needs more navy right now because like Blue's just sending demo ships and he doesn't really have any demo ships. Like what? Red actually has some fire galleys over here. But the castle being dropped by uh by by red right now and blue blue is basically out of the game I think I don't think there's really a way to come back from this red has so much navy killed and blue doesn't really have the rest blue doesn't really have the rest to really continue doing this like I really felt like blue should have tried to transition into making a good late game army that can deal with the navy rather than just like doing this like honestly this is a very tough one to play because uh yeah freeview castle is always the best. Preview castle is a dark castle. Not so much. This looks like a pretty low elo game. So I think the three veils are gonna do quite well in making up this castle. The two veils here are currently protected by the palisade walls. And uh, not much army. I really feel like Red should have just moved these fire ships. This kind of this kind of like is half disturbing me with the fact that these two fire fire ships are over here not really doing anything. But yeah, the two the fire ships are coming out, war galleys are out as well. And uh, I don't think I don't think Blue could really come back from this. I think Blue made a very bad choice of not going to stone. Because uh, I think Blue was already losing the military wise for the for the navy. So all for what I think Blue should have done was add villagers to stone the moment he clicked up to castle. So that he could put up a castle to defend his uh, his eco and his dogs. But now we're gonna have the the Malay castle standing proudly in the Vietnamese base with a couple of fire ships and galleys just 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 done just protecting this and actually i didn't realize this but all three of the hey bell fun fact all three of the bills actually there's a fourth bill but all the bills that were sent forward to, to make the castle yeah they survived they survived and this castle is actually going to challenge this stable this stable is going to go down for sure this castle doesn't really do anything except for really secure his position so i'm not sure what red intends to do here oh red's going for p tarts what no! No! This Pita's gonna blow the TC! Boom! 600! Well, 520. 520 have gone! More Pita's! More burning! This is turning out to be an amazing game! Oh my god! More Pita's on the way! Kaboom! Blue's desperately referring the TC! Making Navy! He has to do something to stop this! But oh my god, all these Navy is just sitting here doing nothing. What's Red doing with his rest? What is this floating? He's floating 2,000 wood and 1,000 gold. What the fuck? He's floating so much rest, just a meme on this guy. What is this red player doing? What is this? He's trickling in the p tarts one by one as he slowly try to take down the TC. The TC's at half health. The demo ship is trying to sneak out and try and do some damage. But you have the castle fire and the war galley fire over here. I really don't know what's gonna happen. But seriously, this game looks pretty done, honestly. Like, like Red can actually drop down a second castle at this point. Oh, we don't have a second TC being dropped by Blue. That's one TC above his opponent. And the Veil lead is still in the flavor of Red, but <laughs> not much we can really say here. Now the Veils here are gonna, are gonna fight the War Galleys, which is very interesting because War Galleys do do a little bit more damage than Fire Shit. Well, I would say War Galleys do do a little bit more DPS, but holy fuck. Red just queued up 5 demo ships. What is going on? What is going on? Well, there is Imperial Age being clicked up right now. 
I have no idea what is going on here. The Alfred, Alfred is basically like total memeing on this game after he won the Navy War. But like, I don't know, like, like, it feels like a really weird game. We do have a forward stable being dropped, but knights coming out from Genghis Khan. I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. Ren has a pretty undefended eco. If if the knights come in, they can actually raid the eco, and and Red will have nothing left to deal with this eco. I don't know what the five demo ships here are supposed to accomplish, but boom, a boom, and one build dies. A boom. Okay, kill the dog. Kill that dog, please. Oh wait, Red scouted the Red scouted the stable. What's he gonna do? Wait, you gotta you gotta get rid of the stable. It, it's garrison with knights. You gotta do something, man. I mean, you see the stable being garrisoned in the middle. You probably should. You probably wanna do something about it. Man, this has been a really freaking amazing game. Malay imp and spearman being made in imperial age. I cry. Second class going up. <laughs> Oh, this is amazing. So the knights are killing the the knights are killing the fishing ship. So, well, I guess that goes Malay eco. But yeah, uh, the knights and the fire ship is going up, and uh, we're gonna see. Oh no, the spear is gonna open the way for the knights. Oh, that's GG. The four knights are gonna come into the base. We do have plus two going up right now. Plus two and plus one. Oh, this is gonna be. Oh please, please, please bother the knights. Please bother the knights. Oh, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you sending demo ships? Why are you not sending demo ships to defend? Oh my god! Oh my god, Red, you aren't paying attention. What are you doing? Oh, he's driving the. Oh, the demo ship just killed four fields over here. <laughs> what is this game? Red has actually stopped production. Red doesn't know how to multitask. He's like, uh, wait, what do I do now? I got shit here. Uh, I've got shit here. Uh, 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 what do I do? Like, like, blue sending in the knights into the red eco right now. And red's eco is as vulnerable as can be. Red has actually nothing right now. And, uh, blue coming in. Gonna kill some veils. Okay. The town bell being rung. And, uh, the, the, the TC does go down. He does have another TC back home though. One demo ship coming forward. Now he's just gonna mescal the gold veils. And uh, yeah, kaboom. No, no kaboom. It, this is why you need aggressive stance for a demo ship when you send them in like that. <laughs> Kills one veil. <laughs> Value. <laughs> so we do have more fire ships going on the way. And we do have pike man on the search. And holy fuck, look at these quick walls. Double barracks quick wall. Uh, there's a hole here. And a gigantic hole here. So Palisade wall being dropped up, house being dropped up, but uh, I think it's a little too late. Yeah, these, these, these knights are gonna come in, they're gonna kill all these eco. Red has 19 idle bills, all in his TC right now. Oh, the quick walls from Red! Is it gonna work? Oh, that bowling foundation. Oh, but he he's paying attention! The houses are here go up! And the pikeman research! He's gonna come up! What's he gonna do? This is a perfect defense from Red! And Blue's main base is completely gone for! One trap is just killing all the buildings. Oh, free stay, free barracks producing pikes. Oh no, Red, you need to protect. You need to repair this TC. I mean TC. You need to repair the house. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Look at this. Fire ships in, pike men in. They're like really confused at the moment. We're like, what? What do you do? What do you do? Oh, can can kill them. But these are unupgraded pike men. They're not gonna be able to do much against plus two knights. Yeah, I think this this this, this is actually just gonna kill a lot of uh, Red eco right now. What is this forward stable by the Malay player? What is going on here? Man, all these eco's gonna get wiped out by red. And we can see that the Vilkan is going in favor of... Well, it's still in favor of red because the demo should just kill a whole bunch here. Idling here, idling here. Oh, he, he, he's still taking farms. He gets food, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, this is fine. It's only it's only 40 minutes in the game and like one player has 25 vils and the other player has 26. So this is just... This is just this is just amazing. It's just amazing. Well, I, I blue, blue does have a market though. Oh wait, no, the market burned down. The market got. Oh no, no, there's a market here. He could, he could potentially make more army and try and go on the the red player. But like, yeah, red still has plenty of rest. He still has plenty of veils on farms. He's got pike man. No upgrades against plus two knights. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Man, this is this is this is the epitome of I have. Good ideas, but no execution. Yeah, this is definitely a low elo game. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, a couple of veils. Made a stone wall here. I'm not what gonna do, but man, so veils are gonna batter down this trap. 
Is it not in range? Oh, it's only 8 range, wow. Uh, oh, the Pikeman here is actually going to help kill the Veils. That's nice. Oh, the Veils going to make way for the, for the Knights to go in. Oh, but the Pikeman does kill one Knight. So it is a very interesting game, guys. Where we send in Pikeman one by one against a mass of Knights. And we don't upgrade our Pikeman before we send them out. <laughs> oh, more Garrison. <laughs> Alright, see you, Bell. Thanks for coming by. Man. I honestly love... Uh, I honestly love this low elo games. This is like this is like one of the best. Oh, he's building a mining camp. Oh my god. Well, blue actually has no eco left. Blue actually has no eco left. I have no idea what's going on. Like red, 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 red is losing his pike man, but with nothing to heal the knights, I think these knights are gonna slowly die. Siege fan, siege fan coming out, and blue actually make killing a veil here, killing the crocodile over there, making room. I mean. Doesn't Red just like send some bills, build another lumber camp over here or something? Like there are things that Red can do here that can help this situation. He's just not really doing them. A lot of island from both players. And I actually really don't know what the hell's going on in this game. This is as messy as game as a game can go. And this galley is actually still freaking alive. Uh, the pike man is actually doing quite a bit of damage here. We'll see how much uh, bills uh, go down in a while. But uh, we're gonna have some uh, idle time over here. Uh, the knights are still trying to find damage. I don't know what damage we're gonna find here, but we do have a ram. And the pike man actually. There's actually still one pike man alive. And ooh, karambits! <laughs> karambits! Yeah! Ha! 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 Eat my six attack! Ha! Ha! Yeah! Here! <laughs> the, come on! Yeah! The poor bill dies over here. And uh, the knights are killing some bills over here, so you know, you, you can't discount them just yet. With plus two, with plus two armor on these knights, TC fire actually doesn't do anything on them. And red actually taking the wood over here, which is very interesting. I don't know what's going on here, but karambits are gonna be hitting the veils. So yeah, this is uh, going quite great as great as games can go. And the pike man, yeah, doing much, lots of, lots and lots of work. Uh. Like red is technically doing a decent job because red has a veil lead technically of 22 veils to 6 and the 6 veils are over here trying to come back into the game. Okay, he does have plus 1 armor on the, on, on the pike man. So they will stand a better chance but this is way too many knights for the pike man. They are going to do take off quite a bit of health damage off the knights though. And he's, uh, blue is adding knights so this isn't, this isn't a completely wasted game. Like red has no eco. Blue has no eco. He does have a lot of gold though. I really wish I could see the market prices. Yeah, but the three karambits are just gonna have fun here. Man, I have no idea what's gonna go on here. Who could, who could win this game? <laughs> who could win this game? This is this is looking very interesting. Like, Blue has no veils. Blue has almost no veils. But he's taking shawfish. He's getting a little bit of economy set up. But Red has a kind of military advantage. What? Kind of military advantage. He has three karambits, one trebuchet. Oh, he has four karambits now. What the hell? Blue's actually house right now. Uh, fire ships not gonna do much actually. Fire ships actually lose to knights, which is very funny, funny to me, because you know knights have high attack, so fire ships actually not gonna do much. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what's going on. Red has literally no rest left. Oh, he's rebuilding his TC here. And regathering stone. Yeah, this 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 mini army just it went from looking like a very straightforward game to being an absolute mess of a game. You wonder why Blue hasn't resigned? Well, his plus two knights basically just endured all of Red's army. And even though Red made pikemen, all his pikemen have been unupgraded. So Blue thinks that he still has a chance. And now Blue is rebuilding his eco on the top, thinking that he can come back into the game because of how much idle time he got off raid. So maybe that's why he thinks he still has a chance. I mean, he is, he is technically like building back up. The demo ship being built right now. I don't know what that's for. The trap is just slowly killing stuff behind. Like, I don't know. Well, the Karambis are going to find the, 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 the new TC position. So I don't know. Demo ship being created. I don't know where though. I have no idea where this demo ship is being made. Oh no, the demo ship is over here. Why? Does he want to snipe this? 
Oh, this could be juicy. <laughs> now that is a click worthy moment. So the nightmares is significantly lowered and a lot of health of them have just been taken out. So Red actually making another demo ship but it's in another dog. I'm not sure what Blue intending to do right now. Red's building another TC. What is going on? So Red's rebooming on Wood Eco to try and come back with Navy, I guess. This is such a weird game. This trebuchet has actually killed so much, you know. This tre this one trebuchet, one trebuchet, like he built five petards and sent them in one by one into the TC. Then he built a single trap, which actually took out all of Blue's base. And now he has a couple of Karambits and Pikemen around. Like, like Red does know that this base exists. So, it won't be long now. He just needs to, he just needs to attack this de decisively. Where are the Blue Knights? Oh. I think the Blue Knights got taken out by the demo ship. Boom. Uh, I missed the big cutter boom. Oh uh, yeah, I see I see corpse, corpses over here. I think the demo ship actually killed all the knights. Ooh boy. No, 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 the, the knights are over here. I thought it was a new one. So he sent all the knights all back here, but... Five knights had very low health. Man, and he's tanking castle fire. I'm not sure whether you want that. But the good thing is the melee doesn't have 36 yet. Man, this game never ends. More knights getting added. Look, blow up the stable. You know he's making knights. Blow up the stable. Don't send your demo ships to blow up the TC. Blow up the stable. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Boom. Boom. Okay. Fun's over. It really strikes me, the resilience of these two players is just amazing to watch. Like, Red is... Red has no Red has no food eco. He's not trying to rebuild his food eco. He's trying to win the game on demo ships alone. But honestly, you're running out of gold. Okay, he's trying to build builds again. Thank God. Boom. Now I really don't know what demo ships can do here. Honestly, I don't know what demo ships can do here. Like he does have two TCs to protect both of the villagers on wood. I'm not sure whether this is really gonna be enough. Man, this is looking really, really fun. So, yeah. Um, he's getting some raids off. Oh, the demo ship's gonna blow up though. Oh, nope, not gonna blow up. What's he doing? There we go. Imagine winning the game with demo ships. Because that's what this Alfred wants to do right now. And Desperately trying to re reboom his eco. While Red builds more demo ships. See ya. I'm very surprised that these guys haven't given up yet. Oh, this demo could blow up here. <laughs> okay, trivial skill. Not bad. More Karambit. More Karambit slashing. Where's the trap is still alive? He could trap this TC. He could trap this TC. Building mostly. He could trap the TC and protect it with the two pikemen and one karambit. Well, four karambits that he has. But instead, he's going mass demo ship. Which is working actually because these demo ships are killing the TC. And killing some veils, so I guess that's technically something being done. Kaboom. Kaboom. Oh, can you build there? Kaboom! Okay, very good. Ting! Ting! Kaboom. Kill another veil. Okay, very good. Uh, this TC is gonna die soon, but I'm really surprised that. Kaboom! Okay, five veils killed. Very, very nice. I can't tell if uh, Red is memeing or Red's taking this game seriously. GG. Well done. I have no idea what the fuck I just watched. <laughs> I give it my best on the hit. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the first set of group one of the NNL Hidden Cup. I have no idea what the heck I just watched. But uh, that was a game and that was that was the first set, so I guess it's better than our tournament going nowhere. So uh congrats to Alfred the Alpaca for making it into the winner's bracket. Uh hopefully he will have a more worthy opponent to face next. And uh, Genghis Khan still has an opportunity to move on to the next. So uh, I'm just gonna do a little bit of uh, funny editing right now to try and to try and uh, get this stuff going. Uh, hang on, just trying to fix this. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for this best of three series, we see that uh, Alfred the Alpaca moves on to the winners bracket. And Genghis Khan goes to the lose bracket. So very soon we will see the next best of series, either with Alexander the Great and name of an AOE hero, or we're gonna move on to another group stage. So thank you very much for coming over the stream and watching me cast this beautiful series. Uh, props to both players for giving their all for this particular game uh, series, game series, series of games, games of series. And yeah, uh, this is it for today. Uh, I am extremely tired because uh, I am very, very much uh, been busy the whole day and doing lots of stuff. Very tired. So kind of messed up, forgot the format. Very terribly sorry for that. But I hope you enjoyed watching the games as I enjoyed casting them. And hopefully we'll get more NNL Hidden Cup games going for our tournament and for you, our beautiful viewers. So thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please, please uh, do support our dear friends in NNL uh, by your comforting messages that I will definitely convey to them.